Let's look at our first set of definitions for exponents. Our first definition has to do with positive integer exponents. a to the third power is defined to be a times a times a. So when your exponent's a positive integer like this, exponents represent repeated multiplication. So if I have 2 to the fourth power, I can use this definition to say this is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And I multiply 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Likewise, if I have 5 to the second power, that means that I want to have repeated uh, multiplication with 5 as a factor twice. So 5 times 5, and I end up with 25. So 5 to the second power, by definition, comes out to be 25. Let's just look at one more. How about 10 to the third power? That'll be 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 times 10. A thousand. So when I have a positive integer exponent, that stands for repeated multiplication. Now I want to show you that that definition is similar to the definition that we have for coefficients. If I was to say I had 3 times a, where instead of an exponent of 3, I have a coefficient of 3, that stands for repeated multiplication. Oop. That stands for repeated addition. So it's a plus a plus a. So when your number here is a coefficient like this, it's no t a positive integer coefficient, it stands for repeated addition. When the number is an exponent like this with this notation, this stands for repeated multiplication. Okay, next we have a to the zero power. Now this also is a definition, a to the zero power is defined to be the number one. Now you might ask yourself why it's defined that way, and I'll just tell you the answer to that because that's the only definition that will make everything else that we do with exponents consistent. Any other definition for a to the zero is going to foul things up somewhere along the line. So this is the definition, a to the zero is equal to one. Now remember, with definitions, what you want to do is just say yes. You just accept them. Uh, when I tell people I'm Mr. McCaig, they don't say why. That's the definition. That's my name. So, likewise, when I say that this is a to the zero is equal to one, it's a definition. You simply accept it. So, if I have two to the zero power, okay, I use my definition, that's one. If I have five x squared to the zero power, that whole quantity to the zero power, still one. And here I'll just add in as long as x is not equal to zero. The only thing I'm not going to be able to use here for a base is 0 to the 0 power. So 0 to the 0 power, that's a different uh, category of things. We're not going to see that, so we don't have to worry about it too much. But the definition here holds as long as the base A isn't 0. Okay, what about negative exponents? For instance, if I had a negative exponent like negative 3. Well, negative exponents are defined to give us reciprocals. So A to the negative R turns out to be defined to be 1 over a to the positive r. And again, we don't want to use a base of 0 in this situation because that would possibly give us 0 in the denominator. So, for instance, if I have 2 to the negative third power and I use this definition, I know that's going to be the same as 1 over 2 to the positive third power. Well, I know from my definition for positive inter integer exponents that this is 8. So I end up with 1 over 8. So negative exponents, do they give us negative numbers? No, they give us reciprocals. 5 to the negative 2, 1 over 5 to the positive 2, and that comes out to be 1 over 25. So again, my negative exponent here, by definition, gives me the reciprocal, and then I have 5 to the second power, which simplifies to 25. That means that 5 to the negative 2 turns out to be 1 25th. I want to do one more problem. I have to move over to this side of the board. So what I want to do is look at a fraction with a negative exponent. So suppose I have 2 thirds to the negative 1. So there I have a fraction with a negative exponent. Well, my definition for the negative exponent tells me that's 1 over 2 thirds to the positive 1. So I just do what my definition tells me to do and write that as the reciprocal. 2 thirds to the first power, I know, is just 2 thirds. And 1 over 2 thirds is the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. So again, my negative exponents give me reciprocals. 
two thirds to the negative one turns out to be three halves, the reciprocal of two thirds. So negative exponents with fractions, still easy problems to work. So I have definitions here for what to do with positive integer exponents, an exponent of zero, and negative integer exponents. These definitions you just want to accept, and then you want to work enough problems so that these definitions kind of represent the way in which you operate when it comes to exponents.